Hello everybody and welcome to uh, this panel at Sonic Vision Music Lab and Festival this year called EU Toolbox for Artist and Manager. Uh, it is my honor to be your host for this panel which has a big task ahead because we only have about 45 minutes uh, to introduce to you four uh, different European initiatives. Um, so let's uh, dive into it. Um, first and foremost, I'm going to ask uh, the four of you to just quickly introduce yourselves and your background, uh, what you do and your initiative. But let's try and, and keep it short so, and we'll del dwell delve into it um, further a bit later. So. If you want to, if you want to start, start yeah, at the end. I'd like to start. Thank you. Uh, my name is Markus Graf. I'm executive chairman of Pop RLP, um, f uh, financed by the government of Rheinland-Pfalz, part of Germany, um, and I'm sitting here for our great um, project Multipist, that uh, means artist support in the greater region. Greater region is Rheinland-Pfalz, Saarland, Luxembourg part of Belgium and part of the greater region in France. And we have a specific parkour uh, for bands to coach the bands um, in all um, kind of uh, aspects of live music, uh, doing stage performance training, um, technical uh, aspects. And in Germany we, we're going to record and produce a single with uh, every band that is into this program. Every year we are coaching about five bands or acts. Okay, thank you. Tina? Hi, my name is Tina Wittmann. I am uh, a project manager for Rock City Hamburg, uh, based in Hamburg. And we are the uh, partner organization for the Exit Music Network. Um, Exit meaning exchange of international talent in Europe. And um, yeah, that's basically what we do. We have amazing bands that we are exchanging within our nine countries, um, as well as uh, associated festivals. And um, yes. Thank you, Tina. Hello. Sten? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Uh, my name is uh, Sten Ove Toft, and I do the programming for a venue in Oslo in Norway named Blå. And uh, Blå is, uh, is a member of uh, this um, European platform named uh, Live Europe, which consists of uh, 14 venues in 14 different countries around in Europe, which is uh, designated to promote uh, young up-and-coming talents, as it's called, technically. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Christoph Thun. I'm the project manager of the Innovation Network of European Showcases called Enis or Inis, depending how you pronounce it. And uh, it's co-funded by the Creative Europe program of the European Union. And it was funded by eight showcase festivals. Shout out here to the present ones, Sonic Visions, Waves Vienna, Liverpool Sound City, and Gigmit um, as the project leader and so to say technical backbone. And uh, we're in a network of showcase festivals in Europe, a growing network. Uh, currently, 20 countries with 22 festivals. We're approaching that number right now. And uh, it's an exchange program for artists and for professionals. So we have a pool of talents, about 100, 133 per, per year, that get booked to um, over 100. I think this year it's 150 slots that are reserved for these talents at the showcase festivals. Thank you. Um, as for me, my name is Geraldine Zanaska. I run my own company called Compass Music, uh, which I've started this year, uh, which is a music export consultancy. Um, my background is I've uh, worked in the UK and France for the last 10 years, including for an export office, the French one, uh, Le Bureau Export. So I'm, I'm quite familiar with the problematic and challenges that come with trying to have a band uh, cross different borders. And it's, it's really great to see that over the last few years, we've had more and more initiatives uh, com coming from everywhere and I think what's interesting is different initiatives are studied by different uh, part of the industry sometimes it's showcase festivals starting it sometimes it's venues because I think everyone is working towards the, the same goal of making music circulate but I think the quest first, first question that I have for my panel really is what was the ethos if I can say what was the reasoning behind starting each of your initiative what problem is it trying to fix, if I can say? And maybe we're going to start again in, in, in this order. Yeah, Let's start with multipist. Okay. Um, 
Multipis was, was founded in 2008 and was a, a kind of only French-speaking regions. And as we all uh, know, um, the idea of Europe is bringing people together and our idea was bringing mu musicians together. Um, and we are doing these workshops with all five bands nearly at the same time. Um, so we can uh, create some very positive dialogues between the musicians and also we are connected with uh, a small amount of venues and festivals so we can put the bands on, on stage and that, that was the main idea of Multipist to educate the bands, to empower the bands and uh, uh, put them on stage, not in their own region um, every band doesn't like to play always in, in the hometown to, to, but to bring them on the next level and in the partner regions and the greater region is kind of uh, in focus of the politicians to, to make Europe visible um, and that's uh, what is so fantastic in this program to cross the border without any ideas of uh, uh, stopping and opening the car and uh, get the equipment explored. You can drive to France, play a gig, take the French band to Germany and uh, that works really fantastic and it's a okay, good so idea. It really, really was education and I yeah. guess um, think local, act global kind of thing. Yeah, you can, you can say that, yeah. All right. Um, so I can't say for the guys who founded Excite uh, because and, and I wasn't there, uh, but I think a problem that uh, they saw back then and that we also see um, nowadays is that it's really hard getting the first step outside of your country and outside of your comfort zone, basically, and that the first step always is the hardest. And that's kind of where we um, kind of dive in and kind of support the musicians. And also that uh, the second uh, part is that, um, you know, usually when you have a gig, you go there, you unpack things, you play your gig and you pack everything back together and then you leave. And then sometimes that's very basic and we're like, well, you, you, you and it's especially expensive. And um, so in order to, for that to be really sustainable and that you get your money worth, it's like there should be more than just the one gig. There should be someone promoting you there should be you know some extra value that we are trying um, as a network to give all our artists yeah, I think that was interesting when you said that the word sustainable I think it is a very important one and I think you know I've come across it in my previous work is then yeah is it really worth it doing it just just for the one gig so I think it's interesting to see um, that it goes beyond beyond that how about um, live Europe um. <clears throat> Live Europe uh, started uh, six years ago, so like, but uh, technically now we are celebrating our like five year anniversary. Happy birthday! Thank you. Um, and it was started by an initiative from uh, Ancien Belgique. I probably pronounced it wrong, but AB in Brussels, uh, together with Rockhall, uh, amongst others. That was the uh, original ones. That's. Um, Try to make a platform where, because it was difficult to uh, get fundings from the Creative Europe platform, and um, uh, and also uh, with the focus to promote young and up-and-coming artists, which uh, is gets increasingly uh, difficult, basically just because of, because of costs. You have a lot of um, uh, yeah, you have a lot of um, small clubs closing nowadays, which is a big. Um, Big issue in, um, I, I guess, like around in Europe in general. So um, the idea is stronger together as venues. Yeah, and um, so the idea was to um, like kind of like minimize risk for the venues and uh, increase awareness about European music in general, but also also focus more on uh, young and upcoming artists, more like demo bands almost. Uh, a lot of bands that's uh, playing um, these two days here are quite relevant for the Live Europe platform. Um, so um, there's a yeah, it's a simple simple criteria and also like a simple idea. Uh, so 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 basic and simple that it's uh, it can easily be explained and easily known and uh, and understood and very easy to implement as well. Thank you. Um, the the main idea behind Enos is the, the core idea would is to do something against the segmentation of the European music market. So 
to foster exchange of, of talents and professionals and, and get people from the festivals to know each other and give the talents, the bands, a chance to tour in Europe and thus become, you know, grow their audiences and maybe try to make it also beyond Europe. That's what I would say is the, the main goal, um, the core idea. But also, obviously, many of the showcase festivals, when uh, we started working together, they were, for example, focused solely on their countries. And when you're part of Ines, you have to book a certain amount of foreign acts, so outside of your country, and you have to have at least 50% of your panels in English. So it's also helping the festivals themselves become more international and more relevant in Europe and uh, help um, artists and professionals from other countries discover these markets. So let's say for um, a Spanish band or a professional to discover the Polish market by going to Spring Break, which at the beginning was focused solely on the Polish market and now has become more international with many more English panels and uh, international acts. Mm, so it's the exchange, the exchange element and really doing something to you know, fight this segmentation of, of the market to really create a European market, not national markets. Uh, you're, if, if, uh, re, uh, stop me if I'm wrong, but um, Ines was started by a Turkish festival yes, yeah. and Gigmit. Yeah. So that is kind of a different setup, as in Live Europe was only started by venues, and y your setup is, is, a, is a little bit different because Gigmit is a music startup. Is it it's a, startup? a booking platform. Um, Gigmit has been, uh, been around since seven years now. The project Enos itself exists since 2017 and 2018 was the first year where the festivals booked the Enos talents and the pros. Um, now we're in our second year and we have our third year coming up, of course, next year. And then we will reevaluate the project and, and change some things. But um, yeah, some of the festivals have been around for a much, very long time, um, a much longer time than, for example, Gigmit itself. But yeah, it's the cooperation of Gigmit together uh, with, with the festivals. So Gigmit gives, so to say, the project the possibility to have all the talents on one platform and for the festivals to book them through the platform and the talents to apply on one platform, not separately through different application systems. They have one profile and the, uh, our partners can see where they have played. So um, it's the technological partner okay, as so well yeah, as the founding. It's a roadmap of... Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, obviously, there's, I think, um, one question that I didn't ask, sorry, audience. Um, I wanted to ask, who are you? So could I have a, a show of hand for um, who here is an artist, a musician, or part of a band? OK, quite, quite a few of you. And um, which ones of you are agents, managers, record labels, promoters? Where are the promoters? All at the bar, I'm sure. There's one. There's, There's one. one. There. Good. You'll get all the bands. Okay. And uh, how many of you were already aware of any of the four initiatives that we're here, uh, introducing today? Okay, so about half, I would say. All right. Uh, well, uh, I'm glad that you joined us. One of the questions that I want to ask our, our panelists is at what stage in an artist's career do you think it's the right time to apply to your initiative or program? Like, at what stage, um, yeah, selfish memory, at what, what stage um, should you be at? Should you already have a manager or a label or should you have played a lot already? Or where, where would you, where would you start? Who, who wants to start? I can take that one. Okay. Um, I don't. I don't think there's any. There's any set rules for it, really. It's uh, nowadays you have a lot of artists that's just being discovered on SoundCloud and and YouTube and everything. So it's not really like a criteria that you have to have released a lot of music or uh, or anything. You can be quite box fresh. Uh, coming from Norway, I have with the example with Girl in Red that's playing here tomorrow. She kind of like blew up based on uh, on some YouTube clips, and uh, and that was it. And that's not necessarily more that's needed nowadays. And uh, we have like a very simplified uh, with Live Europe. We have a very simplified setup that you need to be kind of like export friendly already. As we'll you come back to as that. As you question. say, yeah. But it's also just like you don't you don't need a lot of uh, releases. Just like a, 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 a digital single is the minimum. 
but to, for you to be like up and coming, as they say, and uh, a new band, it's also like a maximum uh, of three albums and kind of like a maximum of a, a professional career. That's also kind of quite vague. Like what's a professional career nowadays? What's an album? What's an album no is also quite album. loose. What's music? And, um, and uh, yeah, a maximum of uh, three albums. That's so like our kind of like, it's quite wide and, and, and simplified uh, setup. And uh, so, because they, things are changing all the time, basically. Okay, so quite um, not strict rules, because it, it's kind of open, but you've got rules there, in there's, place. There's a framework, but it's not, it's, it's quite wide. So, um, because different kinds of music uh, uh, do it differently. Uh, okay, popular music nowadays doesn't really that release albums, so we couldn't have the criteria that did, needed to be one album, for instance. Okay. Um, so for Excite, it, there are, it, it, it's pretty similar. We don't have really strict rules. We have bands that did already release a couple of albums, I would say. I think most of them are on like a, they're not like they they're not that far advanced for us it's important that of course you should have a fan base already in your own country you should have um, some experience especially in your own country and uh, we always say it, it should make sense going abroad should make just sense it being the next step in your career and but when it comes to actually picking the bands uh, for the network, um, we always trust in the experience of our partner organizations because every partner organization picks their own bands in their own country. Um, and we all have um, different kind, different different approaches to that. But I think um, some bands are, are up and coming, some bands are, are more on a lower stage. Um, it really, it's really different, and and we always trust in our partners that that you know they they pick the right ones. Well, I feel that's interesting. You said um, you got to have a um, a fan base in your home country, and I think that's one of the conversation that we always have around at those uh, European Shockers Festival is like, um, you know, at what level do you need to be in your home country before you decide to export yourself, and do you have to be virtually famous in your own country before you're export ready because some bands might want to decide that actually you know I'm doing this kind of music um, um, which doesn't really have a market in my country and I feel like I want to try to develop my careers through export actually I mean that's that's what I what I, what, what I meant like of course um, because, because we actually had the 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 case with one of our bands uh, from Hamburg, not with this network, but with another one, uh, with another project of ours, where their uh, fame base actually was bigger outside of Germany than in Germany and the re in the region. Um, so that and and that's what I meant. Like our partners, like I and and we trust in our partners that they know who they're working with because all of our partner organizations work really closely with bands. Uh, we work from the uh, bottom up basically, um, so we know who we're working with. We know if you know, even if the band shouldn't have like it doesn't have a big fan base, we know well they are really would be really good in this country. Then of course we will pick them. I mean that's what. Why we trust in each other, basically, like, and 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 in our experience and expertise. Thank you. I actually think it's a for a lot of bands, it's a mistake to focus solely on your country first and then try a different country because you reach a certain level in your own country and then you don't want to sleep on couches when you're touring, let's say France for the first time. You don't want to go back down. So I think it's best to try to export yourself as quickly as you can. But um, we have very similar, I'd say, criteria. We also trust our partners. So uh, through Enos, um, the gatekeeper, so to say, to the, to the talent pool are each of the festivals. So Waves Vienna selects the Austrian bands um, and um, Liverpool Sound City selects the part of the UK bands because we also have another festival from, uh, from the UK. And so what I think is most important is to have a local following to the point where the, your local, such as a showcase festival, is aware of your existence and knows you, and maybe the booker has been to your show, as well as your export office has heard of you, and they know that you exist, and they think that you're export ready. But it doesn't mean you have to be very famous. We have um, a big band from Germany, Giant Rooks, for example. They're an Enos talent, but we also have some bands that, through Enos, have played their first shows ever abroad, um, and they started touring internationally thanks to 
this small push that they got through the project because they suddenly got booked at a showcase festival in a different country. Um, we have Mavi Phoenix, she's quite big in Austria and she went to some of the showcase festivals through the program as well. So I would say it's, there's no stringent criteria, but basically make sure that if you want to join the program, um, they have heard of you, the, the fe showcase festival and the expert office at best. Okay, Stan? Yeah, I would just like uh, to add that, just like for the, all the artists that's uh, here as well, like it's more, mostly important to just focus on the, on the scene instead of your countries. Uh, because it's not necessarily given like export uh, offices or whatever is knows what uh, what's going on. Um, and uh, it's like we did, uh, I see uh, Frank Kim and I here in the audience, like we did uh, My Venue Blow, we curated a, f a program at his uh, old festival, Incubate in the Netherlands. Pitched in the idea with the 10 bands for the music export office, and they had no clue about whoever these artists were, uh, which has now several of them have uh, grown uh, quite large as well. But it's just, um, it's basically we also we need, we need to like cut down like the national uh, barriers because we're basically just talking about Europe here as well. So uh, more like more scene focused and. Uh, instead of like country focus, I think I it's... Think, I uh, think that's a very, very good point. And yeah, working, having worked for an expo office, I can say we can't know all the bands. And especially if you go into a, um, a more specific scene, it, it's very important to also connect with other people from that scene. And uh, I eardropped on the touring in France, Luxembourg, Belgium earlier. And I think Julien from Def Rock was saying exactly the same thing. It's like, work your scene. You can work your scene on in an export scale, but also how you position yourself, I guess, is... Is, is more interesting and I think it's, it's, it talks so much more to people and to festival if you say, you know, I'm a punk band rather than I'm a German band. It's like, no one really cares that you're German or if some people care, then they're wrong because it should be about the music. It shouldn't be about a nationality. And I think that's one of the, 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 the thing with um, um, showcase festival and, and sometimes as well um, having like country um, stages is like, you know, what does it mean to sound German, is there such a thing? Is there a French music sound? Is there, um, but this is a whole other debate. Sorry, I'm just very passionate about that. Um, I think we haven't heard from you yet on that, on that subject. At Multipist, we're searching upcoming newcomers from the greater region who are able to play live music, uh, play a, a complete set of live music. And what is very important for us, to have the band being available for the workshops and all the actions we're creating. That's one of the most difficulties we uh, experienced in the past, that musicians uh, don't want to uh, concrete uh, work together for a very long period. So we, we're searching the bands um, under the aspect of being available at the actions. Well, we've got professional coaches um, and uh, put a very uh, big amount of money in. And so we have to have bands that we can trust in to be there and be available. Well, that's, um, that's a very good point. Um, I wanted to come back to one of the things that you said earlier about um, being expert friendly or expert ready and I'm going to have to limit yourself to like one sentence each. Um, but what does it mean to you to be expert ready or to be expert friendly? Um, to, to be able to access one of these initiatives? Be good. Play, play a good show. That would still like, just be a good band live. Yeah, if it's good, it's good. <laughs> That's the, that's the main thing, and that's also like uh, taking it back again to what I said earlier as well, like focus on the, on the scenes and everything. It's not, not necessarily like a band is given that it's uh, supposed to be like super popular around in the entire, uh, in, in, around the entire continent. It's, it's enough to just like be, uh, to hit like the scene or whatever that's in a certain territory. So let's say if there's a Spanish uh, black metal band uh, that don't, not necessarily has like a big market in Spain. I'm not really like that well known with the Spanish uh, black metal scene, but I know it's quite big in Norway and Scandinavia. And uh, it, it makes sense for us uh, as venues, uh, for my, my venue then, to bring that band up to Scandinavia and to play a concert in Oslo. And maybe if they have uh, that kind of like extra export drive, they will create a tour around it. 
I think it's always really hard to kind of form some rules because there are always exceptions to the rule. And I think that's why we as a network don't have, we, we don't have any standardized application or standardized, standardized whatever. So beca because we're like, yeah, that, that there's so many, there's so many loopholes kind of where artists kind of fall through or, and then it always depends like what are your partners what are the festivals that you're working with and then fit the bands to the festivals fit the festival to the bands and then there, there are so many things to consider and then again the scenes like where should we start <laughs> yeah. see but i think you know what, what, what you say is, it stands quite important just in and 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 Krista, um, having a very good uh, live show, if you're going to go around showing your music to the half of Europe, you might as well make sure that it's good. And w one of the things that I used to say when I was working for an export office to the band was because I was working with a lot of French bands and France has very good uh, touring conditions. Like they have like two hours sound checks. And then I've lived in the UK, you know, and, and they're like, you have two minutes and then get the what? F you off. You have sound checks? Yeah. So when <laughs> one of my problem was that, you know, I had French bands coming to the UK and they'd be like, um, yeah, so we need uh, loading at 2 p.m. and then sound checks at 4. So why do you need two hours to loading? Like, what did you bring with you? And then one time I had the band, actually, they brought so much gear that they filled the whole venue with it. And the venue manager looked at me and was like, how many on stage? Two people. How many sent? 18? So I was like, you're, you know, just sometimes you have to be um, conscious that your country might have some... Um, habits when it comes to touring that other countries might not have. So m my advice was like, if you're not, you know, able to like sound check in 30 minutes and get off the stage in 10 minutes, you're not expert ready to come to the UK anyway because you'll be really confused and then you'll have a very bad show because you felt like you were robbed of your sound check time or whatever. So sometimes it can be just kind of practical tips. Is there anything that as part of your niche, you mentioned already um, some um, education, but is there anything that you advise on band that gets selected in your initiative to prepare themselves to what's going to be expected of them? Yeah, uh, our initiative is a network of showcase festivals and showcase festivals are a completely different animal than normal festivals, let's say the summer audience facing, not industry facing festivals. So just like you said, you have to be ready to have a sound check or line check in 15 minutes, play a 20 minute set. A lot of the delegates will be staring at their phones. doesn't matter. It's not the easiest shows to play, but they're really important shows. And uh, I would agree, like play your scene and be a good band because I've seen some of the Ines talents. I think, okay, this one's really expert friendly, but we have a Lithuanian Ines talent that is being booked to a lot of the showcase festivals. And it's not easy music to listen to, but they're just really good. Like, it's weird. They're called Timid Cookie. And uh, they're just really good on stage, and they're really professional what they do. They have a professional manager that is using all the opportunities. And they probably will never have a huge international audience, but they're really playing their scene. They're, I'm going to see them next week at Monkey Week. So um, they're really focusing on what they're doing, and they're using all the opportunities. And they go with a manager to the showcase festivals, and they're prepared, and they know how to work showcase festivals. So as it's a showcase festival network, uh, you have to apply to all the showcases. You'll get rejected through the platform. You'll get rejected by some of them. You'll get booked by some of them. By the way, all the showcase festival applications are also open to non enes talents. So you can go on Gigmit and apply to all of them. Um, just use the chances that are there and be ready for the showcase festival world, so to say, because it's different. If you haven't played a showcase festival, you might be surprised. Are all of your initiative actually open um, for application all year long? Or do you have window frames? Is there any deadlines that uh, the musician and the audience should be aware of? Yeah, we, we're searching our artists in the period April, May. Okay. It's just quite easy to fill out a form on the internet, submit it, and then we have uh, four partners of the four regions who are uh, looking for the applications and choose one band from every uh, region. So April and so the next one would be April and May 2020 for 2021. Yep. Okay. Sure. So quite quite in advance. Okay. Yeah, we we're actually starting uh, uh, our parkour at Sonic Visions. So we choose the band in May, and bring them here to get an you know, expression what what is about multipist and what's about the business. Um, and we end the parkour at the same time. That we've, got, we've got here the, the freshers and the uh, old bands who are like, don't. Uh, <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Any other deadlines that we should be aware of? of? Um, so for Excite, uh, we are actually current, uh, currently in the application process. Uh, Interesting. Some countries are already done. Some still have. Uh, so it's again, the application process is always within the country you're from. So if you're Luxembourgish, Luxembourgian, and you know, what's, sorry, I'm, I've been struggling. <laughs> if you're the band from Luxembourg. Um, <laughs> Um, then you have to apply with our uh, a partner from a partner organization from Luxembourg, which is Music Alex. Um, I'm not sure what their deadline is or if it's already done, but basically all our the application process is um, usually the autumn uh, of, of, of the year for the next year. So right now we're in the application process for 2020. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically. Okay, Stan? Uh, for us, you don't need to necessarily apply. There's no necess not a form. Uh, there, are for there are forms uh, on the website. You can also just get a hold of us uh, directly. And uh, since we're not, none of the venues are, uh, are festivals, we like, or we like to call us like a, a 365 day festival. Um, so there's no, there's no deadlines or anything. So uh, very, very easy setup there as well. What about Ines? Ines? Um, for the Ines Talents program, to become an Ines Talent, the applications are usually open uh, June, July, August. So they're closed now and, and the selection has just been complete for the next edition. Uh, but if you want to become an Ines Pro, you just go on the Ines, because this is another thing, you can travel for the managers, because the toolbox for managers as well. You can go as a manager without your band to the showcase festivals and you can get a free pass if you apply through the Ines website. There's calls that are uh, right now there's one open, but there's some coming up soon. So you can always go on the website and check which festivals are looking for artists now, or you can just go on Gigmit and apply to the festivals there directly, or you can find the link on the Enos website. And for the pro calls, um, there's calls Rolling. open. Yeah. So just stay up to date. But to become an Enos talent, it's uh, June, July, August. Okay. Um, what's, um, what's next for your initiative? So obviously... I guess Ines is the younger initiative and some have been running for um, 10 years um, or so-ish. Um, can we expect um, anything new in the future? Uh, are you going to evolve? Um, has it evolved and will it evolve again? Yeah, we, we're actually working on a parkour that's only addicted to business, the business part. Um, actually, we're working with live and recorded music and now we're going to plan the next action to put the business part uh, and add it to the parkour. Okay. Um, so we uh, just or are just about to finish uh, a two-year funding from the uh, European European Commission. Uh, so that was a huge thing for us the last two years, um, and we grew a lot through it um, in so many ways. And so currently we're just kind of still digesting the whole thing, kind of um, kind of reflecting and kind of seeing, okay, where where do we go from here? Um, because one, one big part was also that we also started, the last few years started doing the entourage of uh, the band. So we also supported managers and, and people working more on the industry side, not just bands, uh, similar to you, you guys as well. Um, so yeah, but there, there probably will be, still be changes. Like we're constantly um, looking kind of how can we be better Basically, how can we make more, do more for bands? How can bands pr profit more from our expertise, from the work and from the um, experience abroad? So, um, yeah, there probably will, will be a crazy ride. <laughs> how about Live Europe? Um, we uh, uh, just, uh, yeah, as I said, we've uh, going on for five years now. We uh, we got fundings for the first uh, four years then from uh, from Creative Europe that got renewed. So uh, now we are our we don't have like a, our we have a weird year. It's like our like year of the period starts from the first of October until the uh, other October. That's just budget talk. But um, so we have uh, we so we have four more. Uh, yes, with the fundings from uh, Creative Europe. Are you looking to add more venues? Because it's 15 venues in 15 different countries yes. so far. Uh, there are a couple more countries around in, uh, in Europe. So um, aiming to add more okay. uh, as we go along. Uh, 
Um, it's also like a financial uh, aspect with it. Uh, working on getting uh, more, um, uh, connect more with um, other uh, funding uh, funding systems. Either yeah, if uh, anyone in this room has money to give to these people, I think they they will be keen. Any so business angel <laughs> or make yourself known. <laughs> so ide ideally, we uh, we will continue to grow until we have uh, maxed out on uh, all the countries in Europe. So, so the the, the, uh, the goal is, the, is to have one grand plan. Yeah. Okay. What about Ines? Well, Ines is funded by the Creative Europe program for three and a half years. So next year is the third Ines year um, with the festivals. And then we will reapply, reevaluate re the program and reapply for the next Ines 2.0. So it's uh, open, but next year we have all the Ines festivals, um, the, the founding members and the associate members are also part of the program we continue and um, we plan on going on until we have all of Europe uh, and all the showcase festivals. No, and, and we want to showcase a festival more or less per country. So we've, we're covering 20 countries now and uh, hope to grow a little bit more. It's the same, same, same kind of idea as Live Europe to try and have one representative in each uh, European Union and country. And uh, that's actually a, 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 question, um, a question that I didn't have. Um, do any of you uh, work with the EU or with the Europe, extended Europe, or do you we plan to have a bridge between the EU and other countries as part of the future potential plans? Well, as it's a Creative Europe funded uh, program, we are also working with two festivals from Creative Europe countries. So we have a associate member from North Macedonia and right now also from Serbia. Okay. So um, we're also approaching and in touch with festivals from the Creative Europe countries. So also non-EU countries. Yeah, but both EU uh, candidates, I believe. Um, yes, but um, France, I think, just kind of stopped that. Yeah. Sorry. Don't tell it. Don't tell them. But uh, Norway is still not a part of the EU. Yeah. Part so, of Creative uh, Europe. <laughs> <laughs> but it's part of Creative Europe that has, of course, like uh, it's 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 European countries and neighboring countries. So uh, I believe uh, I believe um, I believe uh, Russian artists and uh, Turkish artists, for instance, are also eligible uh, for the program. And soon British artists too. Yeah, yeah. if they're lucky. Yeah. Um, I think we're running uh, out of time uh, soon, so I just want to open the, the floor to uh, open the floor to questions. It's been a long day. Does any of you have any question for our panelists? Don't be shy. This is your time to shine. All right, we've got one candidate. Hello, is this on? Yeah. yeah. Rob Gibbs here from Progressive Artists Agency. Um, Geraldine, I know you go to lots of these sorts of things, um, but do the panel have any examples of showcase festivals that do a particularly good job of um, showcasing new acts? Anyone who particularly stands out as doing a, going above and beyond? It's, it's a tricky one <laughs> you're asking. Right, uh, maybe we can try and rephrase that as in, uh, come on, it is tricky. Um, I mean, maybe for example, I mean, the Great Escape, when they were doing Bureau Export stuff, they kind of integrated the acts in amongst the lineup, so it wasn't presented as like, this is the French stage. It was kind of done, as you were saying earlier, by the merits of the music as opposed to the, na the nationality. So maybe if there's some examples of things like that. Anyone want to um, do that? Yeah, no, now I'm not representing any uh, any of these uh, festivals. Though, so you're safe. Can, yeah, oh. yeah. Uh, but um, uh, as an example, you have the Bilam Festival in Oslo that started out as a demo festival, uh, supposed to be, supposed to be uh, completely unknown artists, and they still do it um, to this day. It's um, I sat in the demo jury for uh, for Bilam where we uh, boiled down 1,500 uh, applicants down to 20. That was booked for the festival, and they do the same, but not at the, with the same numbers for um, Swedish and a Finnish and a Danish uh, and an Icelandic, like the entire Nordic uh, region, also for the Faroe Islands. 
um, doing the same thing. Uh, I think believe like Sweden and Denmark has like three, four hundred applicants, which they uh, cut down to like maybe ten, something like that. Uh, of course, Bilam has grown as well, so it's not like the prime focus anymore. It's like the, the pure uh, demo artist, but um, it's still a massive amount uh, of the pro of the program. Yeah, it's a good festival, and they're quite well. At, they do a good job of selecting the artists as well. So, I think there's some credibility there, isn't there? I think it always depends on the um, again on the size of the festival. I mean. Um, you know, Ripaban Festival in Hamburg, you know, is slightly bigger than, for example, Men Festival in Ljubljana. Um, although both are great, I've been to both, love both. Um, I think what I personally always think is great um, is when festivals kind of start thinking about diversity. Um, for example, um, of course, coming from Hamburg, Ripaban Festival is close to home. So um, they are part of the key change program that I think um, is, is really great and is important. Um, and I think when you Just see... Just maybe to say that w what uh, the, oh. the key change program is a, is a pledge to have a, a gender balance lineup and a conference lineup by 2022, I believe. Yeah. So basically every festival that kind of knows what diversity actually is and actually kind of sticks with it, I think that's probably someone that also invests in new up and coming acts. Thanks. Yeah, most of the Enos festivals are actually members of Key Change. Not all of them, but but most of them. Um, and I would just I've been to a big part of the Enos festivals, and I discover new acts everywhere. And w I didn't see much of this segmentation where it's just national stages, like at South by Southwest, for example, or somewhere. Um, so I felt that I mean I have to speak for all the Enos festivals that you know I work with them. They're all great. But uh, it's just going to showcase festivals in general, I find a great way to discover the ta new talents. And that's also part of the Enos program. We push these new talents into the, these festivals. But they're also not grouped. There's not like an Enos stage. So it's all spread out. Also, maybe just a quick, sorry, uh, just a quick um, input thingy. Um, also, I, I always feel like it's not just showcase festival that actually supports new artists. Um, there is um, our, we have two partner festivals in Germany and one of them is a small, small, smaller arts and music festival that have a lot of bands that are big, but also like really smart one, uh, small ones because they actually support the effort, they support the art itself. Um, and so I feel like sometimes even the smaller festivals are um, a good starts to actually go abroad and and so with, with this festival um, it's called Milan Targettery, Um and they actually they have a lot of people coming there and a l really good PR um, so that's always a good start as well I think yeah I think it's the point where you say if, if, if you're thinking about applying to any of those programs um, I, I would recommend to really do your research um, you know the same way that you wouldn't email all of the venues just because their venue, you know, make sure that, you know, you're applying to the one that are good for you, check what other bands they had, what initiative they are, um, they, they, they do, um, and maybe start with smaller events because um, showcase festivals, if you're lucky, you're going to play in front of a room with, with many people that m might help you with your career, but if you do a terrible show because you're stressed and you've never done a showcase festival um, at, at a big uh, Turkish festival, then, then maybe it's going to be a, a hard um, waking up to reality on the next day. So uh, maybe take it step by step would be my, um, my advice. Do we have any other question? Hello, I'm Johannes Ripken from Germany. Uh, just a question. Um, do you, well, it goes to everyone to you, of you, um, do you have any coaching program beyond the exporting artists or bring them to showcase festivals. So if you have any coaching program for artists and managers or, yeah. I see we touched a little bit on, on that. Ines has the, the pro, so music industry um, newcomers can join. Sorry, uh, not, not only newcomers, any industry, but it's also a way for newcomers to, uh, um, they apply to get a free pass from the festivals and they write a short letter, so to say, why they want to come, and the festivals get this list, and they see these people. So it's a way of getting seen as a industry professional, as a newcomer, for example, by some of the showcase festivals, and actually getting invited. Uh, Ines, per se, does not have a mentoring program, but some of the showcase festivals do, like Westway Lab, for example. Um, so 
um, like the, fe the program itself not, but the showcase festivals. So if you just look at what the showcase festivals do, some of them have these mentoring programs. And I feel Multipiste as well has a, a big coaching part of their program. Yeah, we, we, we coach the bands, that's, that's right. And we're going to add this uh, uh, in our business part because it's really important to, to be prepared. I think it's, you know, 45 minutes is, is really not enough time uh, to, um, to take everything in from these four very big program in the end. Um, but I think kind of just to, to wrap this up, because I think we've officially run out of time, um, I would say go and visit um, their website. Uh, there's loads of information. I think on most of them you'll have uh, either reports or video uh, teasers about the previous editions or the previous um, uh, candidates. And uh, you'll have the, the, the facts and figures and all the application details, the criteria. Um, and yeah, uh, do your research. Uh, I think uh, our panelists will, will be available in the next few minutes if you want to pick their brains about something specific. Um, yeah, come talk to us. And there's also uh, some of the Enos festivals are here. Seal Pop. Can, can we have a show of hands? Who, who's, who here is... Uh, there you go, musicians. You know where they are now. Run. And Marcos from Gigmit. All right, well, thank you very much to uh, the but four just, of you. Uh, thank yeah. you. Also, just, uh, if, not, uh, if not necessarily now, but it's also just, uh, yeah, just get in touch, basically. That's the most important thing. Is if there, there's I guess a general question, so if there's a booking request, whatever, just... It's just uh, all, of, all our emails and everything are on, online. So. so we can find your contacts on yeah, yeah. Um, Live Europe website. Live Europe uh, has, the, has the form, but also yeah, um, my emails on, uh, online on, our, on their webpage. So. Yeah, that, that's one thing that I love about Scandinavia. Like they're super transparent about um, emails. The British people could learn a few things from there. <laughs> Try to find an agent email. All right, well, thank you very much to everyone. Uh, I hope this was useful for you, and uh, good. Um, enjoy the rest of Sonic Visions. Thank you.